Hi, it's Dorothy Guining with Scrapbooking Quebec, and today I'm here for the Scrapbook Nerd online shop. The design team was prompted with the word relax this week, so I'm going to be scrapbooking these photos of Chester in an extreme state of relaxation. Now, if you don't have pet photos, don't worry about it. You can do whatever you want. But what I'm going to show you is this fun tag grid design. It's a really fun technique to use if you want to play with product and use up embellishments. So this is what I'm going to be using. Basically, it's material from Echo Park's I Love My Cat collection. This is also available in dog themed and I got all of this at the Scrapbook Nerd online shop. So I'll link up what I'm using as well as the shop in the information box below. So here's what I have on my desk and I'm going to start by showing you my photos of Chester. This was not long before he, actually not long after he moved into our home. He was just a tiny kitten and he's feeling right at home. Look at those tiny paws. They are so, so cute. So I trimmed all these down and I did cut myself some photo mats, but I didn't adhere them right away because I'm not sure if I'm going to use the orange side or the blue side. Here are the printed papers I plan to use. And this collection comes with a sticker sheet with printed paper in a collection pack, but there's also a solids pack. So I have a bit of everything there. And now I'm showing you the tags. Now I made five of the six tags, but I'm going to make one for you on camera. I often use tags and I do have tag punches, but for this one, I'm just going to make it because I didn't have a big tag punch. First, I'm going to prepare my foundation page. So my plan is to have a small border at the top of the page. So I'm cutting down two narrow strips of paper and the measurements I'm putting on the screen are for visible page parts. So I'm cutting them a bit bigger than that. And now what I'm doing is adhering them to this blue paper, which is going to be the main part of my foundation page. Now that border that you see that's going to be at the top together measures about three quarters of an inch. But what I'm doing now is trimming down that blue paper so that the entire foundation page measures 12 by 12. And I'm doing this after adhering the border because I find it much easier than doing it beforehand. I like it when my borders peek out from behind the foundation page, so it's just easier for me to adhere it all together and then trim it down. Another option would have been simply to adhere it on top of the 12 by 12 page. So what I'm doing now is creating a tag. I have a tag template, which is just a tag that's in my stash, and I simply trace the corners in pencil onto my rectangle of paper. That rectangle there measures three and a half inches by four and three quarter inches. What I want are the angles on each side to be identical. I trimmed it with my trimmer, punched a hole in the middle, and then I made myself a reinforcer with a hole punch and a half inch circle punch. That's it. You can make a tag that way in whatever size you want. So I've positioned my tags on the page and I'm deciding on the background. So I decide I want the orange photo mat simply because this is kind of a fun, playful page. So the orange is the opposite color of the blue and it really has a certain dynamic to it. So I adhere the photos to the photo mats, but I'm going to keep that small one separate. Like I said, that's going to be part of an embellishment cluster, and that's why I didn't put the measurement for the small photo on the page quite yet, because it ends up getting trimmed down. So on three of the tags, and that's where my photos are going to be, I'm adding some printed paper. So the one you see me working on now, all I did was cut out a rectangle, the very same size as one tag, three and a half inches by four and three quarter inches, cut it in half on the diagonal, and I'm adhering each half of the diagonal, one on one tag and one on the other. Once I adhere it, I have to retrim the corners and on the one on the bottom right, I had to punch the hole and re-adhere the ring around the hole. Now for the top one, I wanted it to look different, so I just cut myself a one inch strip of paper, four and three quarters inches long, adhered it and trimmed the corner. So I'm happy with that, and now what I'm going to do is adhere all of these tags to my page. I find the easiest way to do this is to adhere the one on the bottom left, then on the bottom right, so I make sure those two are of equal distance from the edges, and then I position the middle tag. 
it's easier for me to make it of equal distance when I do that. And once I have one row done, I use that as a guide to adhere the other row. For me, that's just the easiest way. So now I can place two of the photos. Like I said, that third one, I haven't put measurements on the screen quite yet because it gets trimmed down and it ends up being an embellishment cluster. So I'm adhering these photos down and after that, I'm going to start working on my title and my text because once my photos and page parts are down, that's the next important thing for me. I'm kind of auditioning different cut apart sheets. I had in advance taken a cut apart sheet that was part of this collection and cut it up. So I'm going to use this one here as my title. But I have these nesting rectangle dies which are stitched and I'm going to cut it out. It just adds a little bit more visual interest. So what I'm going to do is cut out the title tag and then I'm going to cut out a rectangle that's just a little bit larger and I'm going to do it in the orange and it's going to be kind of like a photo mat. So that's what you see me doing right now. And for the journaling box, which is going to be in the bottom left hand corner, I'm going to cut out this blue rectangle here. That's going to be the journaling box mat and it's going to kind of repeat the block that's in the title in the opposite corner. And now what you see me doing is cutting out a, just a little piece of grid paper. It's a project life card. So that's where I'll do my journaling a little bit later on. So I'm going to adhere these rectangles together, but for the title block, I want to pop it up on foam adhesive. So what you're going to see me do in a minute is take a piece of scrap cardstock and I'm going to cut myself a rectangle that fits right underneath that photo mat. I don't want it to appear. I don't want to be able to see it, but what I want to do is kind of make it a little bit more solid so that I can put some foam adhesive because both of those, the orange and the blue, are paperweight. And if I add foam adhesive, it's just going to kind of, I don't know, I'm worried it's going to bump over time. So that's why I added the scrap cardstock. And um, as you can see, I'm putting down some foam adhesive, so that's going to pop up a bit. Now, when I do the journaling box in the bottom left, that's going to be flat to the page, and I'll end up putting some embellishments on top of that. So once that is down and I get my journaling box down, basically I'm going to create three embellishment clusters, and I'm going to go right to town. So I'm going to do one in the top middle, one around the journaling box, and then the main one's going to be kind of around that photo, my focal point photo in the bottom right. Now what you see me doing here is the favorite part, my favorite part of this entire layout. I'm taking those word stickers and I'm just lining them up, justifying them to the right of that tag, and I really do like how that looks. I'm really having fun using up embellishments here. Just this tag alone with those stickers, there are eight stickers on there. So I'm really happy with that and I will do that again in the future. I've never done it before. Now I'm looking at that um, photo there, but I decide to leave it. I'm not quite happy with that photo mat. I put the meow sticker in the bottom on the journaling box and I like that. And then in the ephemera pack, there's this little frame. It's smaller than what I had already cut this photo. And that photo is just kind of a repeat of Chester's paws, his little toe bean stuck straight up in the air. So I trim it down and that's trimmed down to about one and a half inches. And then I can frame it with this little frame that was in the ephemera pack. Now I really like that, but I definitely want to pop it up because otherwise it's going to get lost in all those stickers. So I once again cut myself a small piece of scrap cardstock just to make it a little bit more solid, added a bit of foam adhesive, and I'm just going to pop it up amongst those words. And like I said, that's my favorite tag on the entire page. I really had fun doing that. So now what I got to do is start working on that bottom right hand corner, but I don't quite know what I'm doing. So I got myself out a piece of wax paper and I'm just putting a bunch of stickers on and that way I can play with placement. And if I don't like them, they won't be stuck to my page. I do want it to be a bit bigger, this embellishment cluster. I get a frame from the ephemera pack and kind of start it by layering and then I add the stickers, I ended up with the kitty that's sleeping because that makes sense. And then I actually put my stickers down and then I realized that the frame I had put underneath my photo was completely hidden. It was like completely useless, but 
I was lucky enough, I managed to lift up the stickers without doing any damage and I pulled out the frame a bit. At least I could see it. It's got this kind of little ruffle around it and it just adds another layer to my embellishment cluster. So once this is down, I'm happy with that. I end up taking that fishbone speech bubble popping it up on foam adhesive as well and putting it above the word meow and the only thing I have left to do is add my strings. You're going to see Chester make a cameo appearance right now in a minute and then do my journaling and that is it. This is a really fun technique to use if you want to play with product and use up your embellishments. Now I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the Scrapbook Nerd YouTube channel as well as my channel Scrapbook in Quebec. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. I hope you check out the Scrapbook Nerd online shop for all these fun supplies and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.